Hello and welcome to Mount Vision Campaign Equestrian. My name is Peter. I thought today uh, do something a bit different and that is just look at uh, my first aid kit that I keep on hand uh, as a horse owner and uh, working with client horses. Uh, I think it's important uh, to have something on hand in the event that uh, an injury occurs and so I'm able to offer the horse first aid uh, treatment and if necessary uh, call a vet after that. So what do I keep on hand? Uh, well I've got a variety of things that I that I have here and I should say that the primary injuries uh, with horses tend to be to the legs um, tends to be to their legs and tends to be cuts or punctures. Uh, there is the illness side of things and uh, that's, that's a little bit different from what I'm talking about. A first aid kit isn't really for uh, illness so much as uh, for injury. I should say I don't keep any uh, drugs myself on hand. If I need anything, uh, that's when I call a vent. If I need some antibiotics uh, uh, or um, painkillers or anything like that, uh, that's when I'll call a vet. I don't keep those things on hand. What I do keep on hand is, as I say, things for immediate treatment. So that comes down to cleaning the injury and uh, bandaging it, uh, in, in pretty much in summary. For minor scrapes and minor cuts and abrasions, uh, I am a great fan of uh, what I call black powder. Uh, the label's actually completely gone off that. It's, uh, it's a wound powder, it's black in colour, hence I call it black powder. Uh, it is an antiseptic, um, it is not an antibiotic, uh, but for those minor cuts and abrasions, uh, cleaning the wound and just puffing some of that on dries out the wound uh, nicely and they heal uh, with uh, no difficulty at all. So that's for the minor cuts and abrasions. For more serious uh, injuries, uh, puncture wounds or bigger cuts, uh, I have a range of bandaging options uh, that I um, have materials for. Uh, as time has gone on and I've uh, developed my preferences for bandaging or ways of bandaging, there are some things that I use less uh, these days and some things uh, that I tend to use more. Having said that, my bandaging has probably gone uh, along the lines of less is more. So I do have on hand, although I don't use much, use it often these days, is uh, just cotton wool. Um, I might use that more to clean around the wound with, uh, with rather than actually as a bandaging product. Um, so there's that. Uh, I also have Gamji. I find that quite useful. Um, not simply for bandaging wounds, but if you've got a foot abscess and want to do a poultice, uh, uh, but a Gamji as part of that packing process is quite handy as well. Uh, if we go through the, the order of what you might uh, do with a wound when you see a wound, uh, the first thing you're going to do is uh, want to clean it. I use uh, running water so I'll wash the wound out make sure there's no foreign objects in there as far as I possibly can um, so make sure the wound is as clean as I can and then I want to uh, kill any potential bacteria that's gotten with the injury through dirt or, or whatever so uh, what I use then is I use methylated spirits in a little wishy-washy bottle uh, what I call it a wishy-washy bottle, squirter bottle. Um, I like it uh, as in a way of doing it um, rather than dabbing because it creates a fine spray, uh, saturates the wound, 
kills any bacteria and away you go. So in my, light, in, in my mind, uh, the first thing that we have to do is clean the wound, make sure it's nice and clean and sterile as possible uh, before any bandaging because if we have a clean wound to start with, uh, then our uh, healing process will proceed much more rapidly. If uh, a wound doesn't require stitching and uh, I have a, a basic philosophy that uh, anything below the knee, um, it's a waste of time trying to stitch that. I have seen effort after effort by vets to stitch or staple uh, cuts uh, below the knee and they really simply don't hold. Um, there's just not enough to work with. So you're better off um, forgetting about trying to stitch those sorts of wounds um, unless there's an art artery or something that needs uh, stitching together or something fairly drastic like that. But even then, in, term in terms of first aid, you'd be applying pressure anyway to, to um, stem the bleeding and bandaging is the best way of, of applying that pressure. Uh, so anyway, rule of thumb, uh, not written in stone, uh, it's a waste of time to bandage below the knee or below the hock. Uh, so what do we do? We bandage. So we clean the wound, uh, running water, make sure nothing's in it, clean it with methylated spirits. Some people prefer iodine, uh, a lot of people prefer iodine, I happen to prefer methylated spirits for no apparent reason. Uh, and then we apply the bandage. Uh, the, the approach I use is usually I will use one of these, a melanin pad uh, over the wound, non-stick, uh, which is important, shiny side to the wound. Then I will pack it with um, these swabs uh, to uh, apply a bit of pressure to that, a bit of um, bit of pressure to that, that's got a bit of bird poo on it, um, so I wouldn't use that one. Um, that applies pressure and then I bandage on top of that to hold it in place. Bandages that I like to use, uh, I have a, a couple of ways of, of bandaging depending on what I'm looking for. Uh, or what I'm looking at in terms of an injury. Uh, my horse, for example, uh, recently sliced open his knee. Don't know how he managed to do it. It's the other marvellous thing about horses is how they manage to hurt themselves. Uh, beautiful, clean slice open of his knee. Uh, quite long, maybe an inch and a half. Um, quite deep uh, in, in terms of a wound. So I followed the process. I washed it out with water. Uh, squirted it with a bit of uh, methylated spirits, um, kill any bugs. Then I applied some wound powder to that. Melanin pad, shiny side to the wound. Packed it with, uh, packed it out with uh, some of the uh, swabs there. And then I wrapped that with vet wrap uh, around to hold it in place and then I got the last part of my little bandaging formula which is uh, elastoplast this is a fresh roll um, so I haven't opened that one I think I've got a nearly finished roll there and what I do with that um, I don't know if you can see it um, but the, uh, the elastoplast has a, uh, a line in the middle there. And what I do is uh, to hold the vet wrap in place is I have half of it on the, the hair of the leg and the other half over the vet wrap. So it, it sticks, holds it in place. So once around the, the top uh, for the, um, just above the, the knee um, and then another one around the bottom of the wrap, 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 wrap below the knee holds it in place nicely. 
if the weather is not very nice, uh, my horses live outside, so uh, sometimes the weather's a bit foul, and I want to keep that as clean as I possibly can, the bandage, so I don't have to change it too often. So I'll uh, use just a, 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 a bandage like this, a, a stable bandage like this, a leg bandage. I think they were polo ones. Anyway, a um, leg bandage, and I will hold that in place with good old duct tape. Uh, so that's 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 kind of like if you like a, a sort of bandaging model that I have that I find useful. I've seen uh, vets pack the bandage solid with 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 cotton wool. Um, uh, the idea is that they're trying to protect the tendons or something. I think, um, although I've never, I've seen it, it takes a lot of effort and doesn't seem to really do anything better than what you would have had. Uh, Gamgee works pretty well as well. Uh, I know some vets like it, some vets don't. Um, personally, I've tended to move away from those and go for a more simple approach. Um, vet wrap can shrink, so you need to be aware of that um, when it gets wet. The other thing with, with the elastoplast, and I must say this, is that you need to stretch it before you apply it. If you don't stretch it, then it will contract and it will cause you problems. So you, um, you take out whatever length that you want to use and give it a good stretch. Um, otherwise you might run into problems with that stuff. Right, what else do I have? So you've seen the bandages um, and so on. Uh, I and the melanin pads, this stuff. Oh, if you're doing poultices on a hoof, um, that's good for holding the, the poultice in place. So you might uh, have the poultice, for example, a little corner of this with uh, soaked in, in copper sulfate um, with a little padding of Gamgee uh, to hold that in place, um, followed by vet wrap to keep all that in place, and then a little booty made out of uh, duct tape works quite well for um, hoof abscesses to, to draw those out. What else can we have here? Oh, um, Arnica cream, good for bruises um, and strains. Always good to have that on hand. Uh, there is, uh, I've got a lice treatment there. I've only used that once or needed that once. Uh, Scalpel blades, I always have those on hand, uh, mostly, um, although you can use them for things like uh, cutting away proud flesh when you're dealing with that, if that happens to occur. Um, they're actually really good for slicing, cutting the, the elastoplast and, and nice clean cut. So I make a cream. Oh, the other thing, Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Love this stuff. If you've got a horse that has a problem with mud fever or rain scold, um, one treatment for uh, rain scold and, and mud fever that I have heard advocated is you drench your horse once a week for three weeks or once a week or once a day for three days um, and that murders all the, um, all the parasites in the horse so the horse is able to um, fight the uh, the bacteria that causes the mud fever. To my mind, that's a fairly toxic approach. Um, mine is a topical approach, and that is to apply Vaseline. I have found that uh, putting Vaseline on the uh, on the mud fever um, in, uh, on a daily basis, uh, and very soon the the mud fever is just gone. Um, if it comes back, put some more on, goes away. Um, I've had marvellous results with Vaseline petroleum jelly for mud fever. What else have I got in my little package of things? Oh, very important. Not so much for a horse with an injury. You can tell a horse with an injury, um, it's injured, 
it's limping, bleeding. Um, but if your horse is looking off colour or looking sick or looking unwell or you're not happy with, with it in some way, um, really the first place you've got to start with is its temperature. What is its temperature? So thermometer, essential. Then you can look at things like uh, pulse rate and, um, and breathing uh, respiration rate uh, on top of that. But anyway, that's a, that's a first aid kit. That's what I have on hand. Oh, baby wipes. Uh, just very good for cleaning around wounds, making sure, you know, getting all the muck and stuff out of the way. Uh, being alcohol um, based, or well, alcohol containing alcohol. Um, it's good, good for cleaning. So, the uh, simple, straightforward um, deals with most uh, issues that might arise with, with an injury with a horse. Um, first aid kit. Obviously, uh, if it's serious, if it's arterial bleeding, for example, you're going to be bandaging in order to s slow the bleeding and you're going to be calling a vet. Um, if, it's a, if it's a nasty, nasty cut, um, that uh, that really does require stitching, um, which means it's obviously going to be above the knee. Um, then obviously you're going to call a vet. Um, this is first aid; it's not medical treatment, so don't treat it as um, a solution to uh, or an alternative to calling a vet. It's really a uh, what to do before the vet gets there if you need a vet. That's always a judgment call, of course. Hope that's been useful. Um, yeah.